the part of Joe Perkins is now being played by Mark Arnold. Here, it's good. You know, no matter how long I stare at this stuff, I come up with the same questions and the same dead ends. I might have some good news for you. I know why Warren Lockridge stole the coin. You remember in Channing's journal where he wrote that he knew about something that would change everybody's life? Yeah, the secret. We've been looking for that from the beginning. Right. Warren must have found out the secret. And the things he stole was to cover up the secret. But what about the other things that were stolen? I mean, look at this stuff. It's just random junk. That's where you're wrong. All these things have one thing in common. They all belong to Sophia Capwell. Now, how do you know that? All right, I looked up the appraisal records of the coin. I don't get your point. Warren was very selective. The only things that he took out of that house were things that belonged to Sophia Capwell. Why? I mean, for what reason? Now, I also found out from the appraisal records that Sophia had these coins long before she ever married Cece Capwell. How long have you known this? Doesn't matter. Yeah, you, you've been holding out on me again. All right, I'm telling you about it now, aren't I? Now listen, Channing must have discovered something about his mother and Warren found out what it was. All right, wait a minute, but that wouldn't explain why Warren would commit robbery and then murder. It doesn't make any sense. It does. If he was protecting somebody. Protecting someone? Who? That would explain the picture. What picture? I found a picture of a young woman in Channing's things. I believe, I assume, it's a picture of Sophia. Well, I guess I'm not the only one that's holding things back. Uh, it's got an inscription on the back, Love LL. Why am a Lockridge? Same conclusion I came to. Warren's father. Maybe he's the one that gave Sophia the coins. The co what, is a gift? I mean, that's a rather expensive gift. But it would imply... A love affair? Yes, yes, yes. In other words, the, that's why Warren stole all those things. He wanted to cover up his father's relationship with Sophia Capwell. You're going to have to speak to Lionel Lockridge about that. More and more as we go along, I felt that that man is the key to all of this. From now on, we are going to have to pay attention. When you like a chocolate-covered cherry, they're only 2,000 calories apiece. Problems with your control circuitry? Beat me in the cockpit? Your mechanic, Tom O'Hara? Is this your handiwork? Pretending to be my mechanic? Well, I, I thought it was a series of simple phrases and has a certain je ne sais quoi. I told you that this has to stop. Did you? I don't remember. Lionel, this is awfully strange. You're showing up here all the time. You got my note. You know who wrote it. You came anyway. It means you're intrigued. And that's a good thing. I figured we'd go for a little spin around the world. I think the gas tank's not that big. We could refuel in Juno. Lionel. Mm -hmm. You make me very uncomfortable. That wasn't my intention. You don't have to do this, you know. What's that? Pretend. Pretend that you're not intrigued. Listen, I think that you're having problems with your control circuit. The plane's all right. I'm just worried about you. You really want the experience? All of it. The best experience in the world. I have searched the globe over for it. You and I together. Okay. Buckle up, handsome. I'll give you an experience that you will not be able to forget. This uh, may cure you from wanting to see me ever again. Huh. A rifle? Mm-hmm. Preferably one with the scope, Ginger. Semi-automatic. And I want some ammunition in a box. I make it two boxes. I'm not sure I believe what I'm hearing. I mean, I am a bit intrigued. Listen, it's the only chance either of us have. Still, you should think it through. I have thought it through, Ginger. Didn't you see the way Kelly was looking at me? I recognize that look, that blank stare, that, that courtesy. And when there's no emotion in Kelly's face, I know she's hiding something. 
Still, you should be sure that she knows. I am sure. She knows about you, Ginger. She knows about me, about this whole sordid mess. Now, Kelly, uh, Kelly wasn't seeing Peter Flint. She was seeing Antonio Fiorno, male prostitute. At least, at least now I understand why she's been acting the way she has, refusing to see me and all that. She's been hiding Joe out. She knew he was alive. It had nothing to do with me. And killing Joe Perkins is your way of solving all this. Don't you understand? Once Joe's dead, once he's really dead, then she'll come back to me. I mean, it might take a year, maybe two. But in the end, she'll be mine. Maybe. And maybe not, now that she knows about your past life. Well, she knows. Joe Perkins obviously told her. So you think she's going to take you back? Antonio, wake up. That girl is high class. She's not about to settle for used merchandise. Oh, yes, she will. Just like she did before. See, you don't know Kelly. Kelly has a weakness, a, a vulnerability. No, once Joe is dead, once he's really, completely, finally dead, then she'll be confused. She'll be hanging by an emotional thread. The only one around here I see hanging by an emotional thread is you. I have the feeling it's about to snap. Then that's my problem. Mine, too. You just give me that rifle, and I'll take care of both of our problems. Murder, Antonio? Big M? No. Mm -hmm. No, murder's when you kill a live person. You see, in the eyes of the world, Joe Perkins is already dead. I'm just going to be tying up a few loose ends. Lionel knew Sophia, and they probably had an affair. Whoa! The lockages in the capitals, they always said that would be dangerous. All right. Now, what is the tie-in to Channing's murder? He was murdered over five years ago. Sophia and Lionel would have had their affair before she married Cece. That was over 20 years ago. How do you know? Maybe she had the affair before, during, and after her marriage to Cece. Maybe her affair with Lionel was the affair of the century. Maybe Warren found out and wanted to try to hide it. See, I've always been very suspicious of Lionel Lockridge. So... What do we do? I mean, to lie on everybody else, I'm dead. I can't go up to them and say, excuse me, did you have an affair with Sophia Capwell before and during the time she was married to C.C. Capwell? No problem, my friend. I have devised a little plan. It's going to go into action tonight. Oh, thanks for consulting me. Yeah, well, I didn't have time. Am I involved in it? No, no, I'm afraid, um, I'm afraid this is my show. Are you going to tell me what is involved? Oh, yes, it's very simple. I'm going to take Lionel Lockridge to the breaking point. And then with a little shove, I'm going to push him over the edge. Beautiful day for flying. Got a cloud in the sky. Hmm, you sound relieved. I hope you're not prone to air sickness. Me? I've circled the globe a dozen times. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Well, this is a small jet, you know, a lot of turbulence, air pockets. Is your belt snug? Uh, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that's just an air pocket. <laughs> Ever seen a belly roll? A belly roll? Uh, yes, yes, I, I think I've seen one. Do I see one? Oh, no, I don't have to. Oh, come on, let's do one. Come on. Ready? That's a belly roll, huh? Hey. Would you like to see another one? Oh, no, no. I mean, I, did, I got the idea. You look a little pale. Oh, oh, well. Well, I haven't been out in the sun a lot lately. Mm, you sure you wouldn't let me take it down? Get a little queasy. No, queasy. Why don't I take the controls for a while, huh? You know you know how to fly. I'll demonstrate. Please. First, let's try a bank. Okay. Well, how about a little altitude now? Altitude. Yeah, this plane handles very well, doesn't it? Yeah, let's make sure we get it back in one piece, okay? Oh, yes, yes. But first, uh, let's try another turn, all right? Another roll. 
jelly roll. How's that? Huh? It's fine. Why don't you let me take him back? No, oh, it's all yours. Thank you. Uh, you know, there's one thing you didn't try. Yeah, what's that? Dive. Uh, right. Right. You know, I wanted to talk to you about that log book, you know, and all those paintings that you wanted to, uh, you know, get out of that boat of yours. Really? What, what, what about it? Uh, listen, uh, that, that right in front of us is the ground down there, Eden. Yeah, I see it. Well, I, I don't want to interrupt you, but I think I can read the license plates on the cars down. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Well, maybe I should take it back and get it. Hmm. Ever hear of the Elman maneuver? Famous fighter pilot came up with it, huh? Yeah? Yeah. Might need this. This? Uh -huh. Oh. Oh, nonsense. No, no. I, I haven't felt a thing. I'd like to know exactly how much time I have. You got until tonight, Ginger. Why are you dragging your feet? What's the problem? I, I can't believe getting a rifle is such a big deal for you. Seems like it'd be right up your alley. But it's hardly up yours. Look, just get me the rifle by tonight. Otherwise, I'm going to have to get it myself. Semi-automatic, scope, two boxes of ammunition. That's right. Yes? I'm back from lunch, Mr. Flint. Yeah, and you're half an hour late. Where have you been, Amy? I'm... I've got a dozen things for you to take care of. I'm sorry, sir. I guess I must have lost track of the time. All right, well, don't let it happen again, Mrs. Presley. Potter, I'm sorry. A Prescott, Amy Prescott. All right, Miss Prescott. Would you please get Mason Campbell on the phone and tell him I'd like to see him at his convenience? It's very important. Right away. Thank you. Love the way you handle your employees. Tone of authority in your voice. You know, I'm not going anywhere unless I get that money back. What money's that? Oh, come on, Ginger. You know damn well what money. The $30,000 that I gave you. Oh, Antonio, be reasonable. I have plans for that money. I can't just give it back. Oh, yes, you will. You're going to be in a heck of a lot of trouble. Oh, no, darling, you got that all wrong. You're the one who's in trouble. <laughs> Evidently, you've forgotten, Ginger. I'm the big hero now. I'm the man who saved Kelly Capwell. So the only thing that I have to do is get that money back in the real estate account, and then I'm home free. What if I've spent some of it? Have you? Some of it. Well, then you're going to have to find a way to get it back. I don't like you giving me orders. You don't have any choice, Ginger. Listen, if Mason finds out that I took that money, he's going to put me in jail. And if I'm in jail, then you are out of business. Then I'll just leave town with my 30000 and leave you here to take the heat. No, you're too smart for that. I'm beginning to think that's the smartest thing I could do. Oh, you got one big fault, Ginger. You're too greedy. You know how much money you stand to make on the other end once Joe's dead. Piece of nothing? Still nothing. A piece of the Capwell Empire is a heck of a lot more than a second-rate pimp like you ever dreamed of. Second-rate? Now that I'll have to think about. Listen, if I can kill Joe Perkins, I can kill you too. Your hand is shaking, Antonio. Awfully hard to shoot straight with an unsteady hand. You've got till the end of the day. I'll see what I can do. Oh, no, you'll do better than that. Because I'm not only fighting for my life, Ginger, I'm fighting for yours as well. You see what you can do about that hand. I'd hate to see that first shot go wild. Don't you worry, it won't. Good. Because Joe Perkins isn't the kind of fella was going to give you a second chance. Well, keep that in mind. Good. I'll get you your rifle. I'll get you your cash. And after that, you better take care of business.
enjoyed this. All those years together and there never seemed to be enough time for vacation. There never was enough fun. Well, his work must have been very important to him. It was his passion. Now, of course, Brandon and I were very important to him, too, but his work, that's what he said gave him his purpose. You know something, Gina? I have never understood that kind of devotion. That's because women don't need corporate structure. They have their children to dote on. <laughs> yeah, some do. Well, you're planning to have a family, aren't you? Maybe, someday. Well, let me tell you, it's the greatest joy of my life. Now, what would I do without Brandon? Now, it's hard to believe that a small child can teach you how to accept a death. One day, soon after it happened, he came to me and he said, Mommy, I know where Daddy is. So I asked him where. And he said, Heaven, with the angels and the good people. He's only six years old, isn't he? Something. He's adorable. Hmm. Well, maybe it's easier for children to handle things like that. Yeah, but he showed me that there's just no sense in dwelling on it. You're lucky then. Yes, I am. I had Brandon and Cece Capwell to lean on. One a child, one a grown man. Both working together to keep me on my feet. You know, earlier I was so optimistic. But now, um, have I changed? Have hmm? I? No, not really. Listen, it takes time to sort those feelings out, Gina. Yeah, I just want to put the pain to rest. I mean, my life doesn't have to change. It, it shouldn't change. I mean, I have Brandon to think about and his future. What about your future? Well, I hope that'll just work itself out on its own, you know? Well, what if you, uh, meet a man that doesn't accept that you have a child from another man? Well, then I don't want anything to do with him. What if you fall in love with him? I wouldn't fall in love with someone who didn't love Brandon. Anyone new in my life will have to accept that my little boy is a part of me. Hmm. Well, then Brandon is a lucky little boy. Oh, I hope so. I'd make him lucky if I could. I want the best of everything for him. The best schools, best friends. I want him to travel and see the world, whatever he wants to do. But you know what I want most of all? No, what? I want to be able to give him a little brother or sister. Maybe both. Now, wouldn't that be wonderful? Santana? Yeah. Then you'd be a real family again, wouldn't you? I got the money for you, Mason. Oh, Peter, don't go writing bad checks. <laughs> it's in cash. Unfortunately, the uh, real estate deal that I had invested in fell through. You uh, don't mind if I count it? Oh, be my guest. I will. Well, as near as I can tell, you're a little short. About $20,000, I'd say. Exactly $20,000, which is why I prepared an IOU for the remaining amount. Let's see. A little presumptuous of you, isn't it? What if I decide not to accept your terms? Oh, you'll accept them. If I don't, you could be arrested for embezzlement. That should be good for 10 to 20, more if I push it. Listen, you know, I'm really tired of your threats. Ever since I took this job, you've uh, pushed me and generally treated me like dirt. Well, you should ask yourself why. I never do anything without a reason. Oh, but you have a reason, Mason. It's because you feel threatened. That's what it comes down to, isn't it? I mean, you've always wanted to be the head honcho, and when you're not, then everybody else has to suffer. Peter, I don't think you understand the gravity of this situation. One phone call, and I can have you arrested. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, call. Want me to dial it for you? You're calling my hand. I'm not scared of you anymore, Mason. There's no way you can touch me. I can have an indictment in 24 hours. Yes, but first I'll have to testify. You've got no defense. <laughs> But won't it be interesting when I tell the courts about how you were aware of the uh, planting of the cocaine on Joe Perkins' motorcycle? In fact, I, I don't even have to do that. I could just make a call to the newspapers right now. Do that and you implicate yourself. So? So you give up your own freedom? You forget, Mason, I'm the big hero in this town now. So what better time for a confession, especially if I made it voluntarily? And without you there to prosecute, why... I'd have to believe that I'd get off with a suspended sentence. Peter, you do all of that just to ruin me. Try me and find out. 
Frankly, Peter, I don't think you've got the intestinal fortitude. The question is, Mason, do you have the guts? I'm offering you the IOU. You can take it and get your money back. You can turn me down, and I'll see to it that this whole town knows about your tampering. So we add blackmail to your list of vices, huh, Peter? I prefer to call it a business arrangement, Mason. And furthermore, if I'm pushed, I'll make sure that C.C. Capwell is implicated in this entire mess. How he promised certain favors in return for getting Joe Perkins back in prison. You know, if I think about it, I could ruin the entire Capwell name. And die trying. What's that, another threat? Don't make me laugh. You're a sick, destructive man, Peter. <laughs> What can I say, Mason? I learned all my talents from you. Now you can take that IOU and get out of here. Otherwise, I'm going to be forced to make that call. You have one week. No, I don't. I have as long as I want. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it. We'll see about that. Oh, Mason, I also would like a promotion. Anything else? Yes, a, a raise would be nice. Talk to my father. You do that. Mason, you have yourself a nice day. Yeah? written all over it. Don't ask me to open my eyes, Augusta. It could spell disaster. Oh, no, Lionel. Not again. Have you got another hangover? What have you been doing putting orange juice in your orange juice? Oh, very funny. My malady does not come from drink this time. Malady is right. You look positively green. It must have been something I ate, my dear. Oh! Uh -huh. Well, I have a feeling it's just another excuse. An excuse? An excuse is a reason for getting out of something. Uh-huh. Like making love to your wife, for example. Oh, well, I'm not quite up to that. <laughs> not quite in the mood at the moment. Yeah. Somehow I already had that impression. Well, here it comes. Well, you used to be so much more creative with your excuses. <laughs> Remember that time in the Congo? <laughs> yeah, vaguely. <laughs> you said you had been bitten by some sort of Congo tick and had been rendered impotent. Well, all happened to be true. Uh-huh. The point is, I am very tired of your excuses, Lionel. Yellow fever, malaria, hiccups. I bet you would even feign some sort of snake bite if it would get you out of your marital duty. It's not my duty, it's my pleasure. Are you sure? Oh, I'm absolutely sure. When I'm in the mood. But right now, I would uh, really appreciate it if you wouldn't pressure me. I mean, otherwise I might be sick all over this lovely bedspread. Do and die, Lionel. Do and die. You know, I, Augusta, I came in here feeling bad, but now I'm feeling worse. Why is that, do you think? I wouldn't uh, know. Oh, yeah? Well, my dear, if you care about my health, you'll just give me a couple hours, all right? Just a couple hours to recover, and then I promise you, I will be the most virile thing in the jungle. <laughs> Leave you alone, huh? Yeah. You make a much better fantasy than you do a reality. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, you know what I've always said. Uh, all fantasy has its roots in reality. Yes, well, we do know where your roots are tonight, don't we? Oh, yeah? Where's that? Dormant. Oh, oh sorry I'm late. Pete? That's all right, sir. You uh, haven't guessed I'm on my way out of town. <laughs> yes, sir. What you got? Well, I'm afraid I don't have any good news for you, sir. I, uh, I circulated your mother's picture all over town. No one's been able to identify it. I hope you checked outside of town as well. You would be anywhere in the area. I'm sorry, sir. I, I checked from Goleta to Carpinteria. Don't think she's in the area, huh? That'd be my guess, sir. If she was, I'm sure I would have heard something. You have a list of the places you checked? Yes, sir. Well, P, you only check the better places. Look at this. It reads like a four-star guide to Santa Barbara. Look, I want you to go back and check the cheap places as well, not just motels. Check every flea bag hotel and flop house in the vicinity. Um, 
may be my mother, but I don't know what she's been like lately. You know what I mean? I understand, sir. I'll get right on it. Good. Have a nice trip, Mr. Castle. Thank you, Pete. Party I wasn't invited to. None of your business. Suitcases? Going someplace? Also none of your business. Well, if you don't mind my saying so, Mason, I think you do need a little bit of a vacation. Well, I do mind your saying so, Eden, and I also mind your constant meddling. You know, before you uh, came home, I could come and go without facing an inquisition. My, 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 aren't we touchy this evening? been a long and difficult day. Okay. Well, then I won't press you for details, because I know you're not going to give me any. Now, there is uh, one little detail you might be interested in. Oh, really? Well, I'll appreciate any little bone you want to throw at me, Mason. Peter Flint's been kicked upstairs. I just talked to Dan. As of Monday, he's going to be vice president of real estate development. Wonderful. Don't try to hide your uh, irritation, Eden. Irritation? Irritation, Mason? Mm -hmm. Look, that's fine that Dad thinks that that's a way of uh, expressing his gratitude. But you and I both know that Peter Flint is not qualified for that position. Oh, and you are, huh? Yes, more than Peter Flint. Well, if you must know, I recommended Peter for the job. You what? Why did you do that? Apart from the fact that I know you wanted the job for yourself, no real reason. If anybody's asking for me, I'll um, be on vacation for a few days. Oh, yeah, in what corner of the world, Mason? They tell me Nice is nice this time of year. Well, well. and good riddance. Same to you, little sister. Everything? Uh-huh. Absolutely. You've got your beach ball, your bucket, mm -hmm. suntan lotion. Mommy has a suntan lotion. Yes, every strength from number 2 to 15. <laughs> what? Well, we're all set, then? I think so. Ooh, I knew we couldn't oh, get away. Hello? Hello, Gina. It's Cece. How is everything? Absolutely wonderful. We're on our way to the beach. Well, the weather's been all right for you, then. I know you're apt to get some rain this time of year. Well, clear every day. You wouldn't believe it. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. I, oh, I hope my business matters aren't uh, too much of a burden. I know there was a lot to take care of. No, we're getting through it piece by piece. Unfortunately, his records weren't as clear as I'd hoped. Well, I wish I could help, but Stockman handled all those things by himself. Well, don't worry about a thing. We'll get it straightened out for you. Tell me, how's my favorite little boy? Well, how about if I just put him on the phone and he'll tell you for himself, all right? Uh, honey, it's Uncle Cece. Do you want to talk to him? Sure. Okay. Here you go. Hiya, Uncle Cece. Hi, partner. Your mom tells me you're having a good time. Yeah, we're having lots of fun. Have you uh, met any cute little French girls yet? No, but we're having lots of fun with Santana. What? Did you say Santana? Yeah, we've been having a real neat time. I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. It's all right. Uh, honey, uh, let Mommy have the phone back. Okay. Thank you. Uh, CC, it's Gina again. Is it true? Is Santana there? Uh, yeah, she flew in a couple of days ago. Why didn't you tell me? Um, I didn't think to. I wish I had known this, Gina. I, I don't know what to say. Uh, she's a good friend and... Oh, she's been wonderful with Brandon. If Santana is there, I'd like to speak with her. Uh, hold, hold on. He wants to talk to you. Uh, we'll leave you alone. Come on, darling, it's okay. Hello, Cece. You found them? Yes. How? Does it matter? Are they still there in the room with you? No. I'll assume from Gina's tone that you haven't told her yet that Brandon is your son. Of course not. 
Then why did you go to France, Santana? I wanted to see him. That's all. I felt I had a right. Why, oh, see, you felt that you had a right to walk into two very happy normal lives and disrupt them. I haven't disrupted anything. Not yet. If you think that you can just... No, Santana, I know. Sooner or later, you plan to tell Gina, and you will carefully pick the time, the right time to tear a child's life and a mother's life, to satisfy your own selfish whims. You'll do it, not caring who suffers, including your own child. That's not true. I only wanted to see him. And will it stop there? Can you just come back to, to Santa Barbara and forget about it? That's not the point. You can't. You know you can't. You're bent on destroying that family, and in the process, you're going to destroy yourself. But I'm his mother. You're not. Gina is. He loves me, and he feels something special for me. It's affection. Nothing more, nothing less. He's only six years old. He's going to respond to attention from anyone. This is different. You're imagining it. You want to believe it desperately. You're trying to rationalize the horrible thing that you're going no. to do. No. I don't want to hurt him, and I don't. Then pack your bags and get the hell away from him. I can't. I love him. Can't you understand that? Oh, Santana, if you loved him and you truly loved him, you wouldn't be there. I can't stay away. You have to. It's too late. I'm here and I won't walk away. This is my fault. All of it. I have only myself to blame. No. I loved you. I trusted you. Now I'm paying for it. Look, Cece, it would have happened eventually. I would have found out. Still, I thought there was a chance. Someday. Now I see we have no future together. You care only for yourself at the cost of all else. I suppose that I, I should have seen it sooner, but I didn't. Cece. Strange. Strange that all I can feel right now is pity. Pity for you, Santana, and what you're going to do to your life. Cece, please, try to understand. I have tried. For too long I've tried. It's over. Cece. I'm sorry. I truly am. Somebody's going to be very happy. Do you think so? It's very beautiful. Hmm. I had a little trouble deciding. There were several of them that I liked, but this one caught my eye. It's so unique. What's her name? Santana. Lovely name. Yes, it is. Your wife? You never know. Augusta? Augusta! You always yell. Do you want to explain this? Explain it? I don't know where it came from. It's a swim mask, a very old one by the looks of it. Throw it away, it's not mine. I want to know how it got here. Why did you put it here? I did no such thing. Is there anyone else in the house? No one. Minx? No, she's at a weekly bridge game. Brick took her there and Lakin's out with Ted. Alone, then? Yes, we are alone, and I can't explain it. We are alone, Lionel. I know. Lionel. What do you mean there's no file on Amy Prescott? She's been working here for the past couple of days. Do you keep a file on temporary people? Well, then I don't understand. What's the problem? No, it's all right. I'll handle it. Thank you. Uh, Amy, would you come in here for a second, please? Hi, have a seat. Oh, should I get my steno pad? No, that won't be necessary. I just need to ask you a few questions. All right. I, uh, I put a call into personnel, and they said they don't have a file on you. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Well... 
You know, they said it's impossible for an employee not to have a personnel file, even someone who's temporary. Now, ordinarily, I'd say that they might have just misplaced it, but they're very thorough down there. They didn't misplace it. I don't have a file. I got this job through a friend, and I'm working under an assumed name. So your name's not Amy? No, that part's real. It's Prescott that isn't. My real name is Perkins. Perkins? In relation to Joe? Yes. Joe Perkins is... was my brother. I didn't tell anybody because I knew Capwell Enterprises wouldn't hire me. Right. I guess you'll want me to leave now. Now, why would you say that? It's no secret how you felt about my brother. Yes, we were enemies for a time, but, uh, you know, I've had a change of mind. I've come to believe your brother was actually innocent. You have? Mm -hmm. I, I had no idea. I've seen evidence, things that uh, Kelly provided, things that I've found out on my own. In fact, the, the truth is now that I feel that Joe's uh, incarceration was a horrible miscarriage of justice. And uh, to have to lose his life, well, it's, it's a terrible tragedy for you, I'm sure. I'm sorry. I uh, guess I'm just a little stunned. Well, I didn't mean to shock you. It takes a strong man to admit that he was wrong. Thank you. The only thing is, I, I wish I could have told Joe before he died. Yes, yeah, so do I. I'll tell you what, Amy. I don't think there's any reason to tell personnel about this. I mean, you just keep working here under the name of Prescott, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, at least for the next couple of days until Veronica comes back. I really appreciate this, Mr. Flint. Oh, you're welcome. You just keep doing the good work, all right? Well, thank you. Sure. Thanks a lot. Obviously, Warren's doing. He probably dug it up and washed it out and forgot about it. Maybe. Aren't you even going to ask me where I'm going? You going somewhere? I usually do dress up to go out. You are welcome to come if you like. Depends on where you're going. To the museum. They're showing a retrospective slideshow of Sir Richard Peel's work, sort of an introduction to the man in his art. Oh, terrific. Capwells were always so fond of making saints out of mortals. Peel probably set the whole thing up just as a fanfare, an advanced fanfare for himself. Oh, come on, that's a few weeks off. Thank goodness for them. You know, you never really told me why you didn't like him. I don't like his type. And what may that be? The people who set themselves up as experts, you know, just so they can toot their own horn. Mm-hmm. He doesn't love the great masters. He just criticizes them so he can sell his own mediocre paintings to an unsuspecting public. Well, the reviews of his art has always been very favorable. Sure. Because he pays for every adjective. The greater the superlative, the bigger the check. I don't believe he pays for his reviews. Worse. No worse than that. He criticizes his own contemporaries just to make his own muck look better. Oh, come on, face it, Augusta, the man's a sham. Well, I still enjoy his work. There's a sort of, I don't know, warmth about it that you don't see that often. Warmth? It's about as warm as a photostatic copy of an obituary. You're just jealous. His works are considered collector's items, and you can't paint your way out of the garage. Really? Whether I can or cannot has nothing to do with my opinion. Peel's works are magnificent, and come on, you can admit it. It's garbage. Absolute garbage. If you like, I'll get five experts who agree with me. Bet you can't even find two. I'm not going to win this argument. You're determined to go, despite my educated opinion. I am going to go because I want to go. Well, then go and have a good time. And don't stay out late. You know how I worry about you. Mm-hmm. Try to stay sober, Lionel. I can tell you've had a very trying day. Can you? How can you tell that? Because you haven't left this room since 2 o'clock this afternoon. Right, and I don't intend to leave it all night. Well, sweet dreams, darling. I'll give everyone at the museum your best. No, 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 don't do that. I save my best for you. Oh, I forgot.
What's this, Ginger? Open it up and see. Well, it looks too small to be a... Oh, rifle. Is my baby happy? What do you know? <laughs> I thought you'd appreciate its portability. What about the ammunition? Three five-round clips. Oh, that ought to do it. Huh? My dear, that's enough ammo to start a war. Yep. Yeah. Run life. Dude, the mask you wore that 